What's up YouTube? This is the Common Sense Professor and today we're going to be starting our third video in a series of how to program PLCs. Today we're going to be looking at more specifically seal in circuits and how we program seal in circuits. So let's start by looking at what a seal in circuit is. So this simple diagram shows you how a seal in circuit works. You've got power coming on your left side on your left rung here. You'll have a push button start that's normally open, then you have a normally closed stop. Whenever somebody pushes this start, it allows current to flow to our coil and activates our motor starter coil. Once that's activated, not only does it start a motor, but it also closes this coil here, this normally open contact so that it's in parallel with our start button. This is called the seal in contact. Once that closes, now you can let off that start button and it keeps your motor running because it seals itself in. It gives you a constant path when that start button is not pressed to keep that motor running. Now we're going to be using this same idea within our program. Instead of push buttons like that you see here from motor controls, we're going to be using these main five different bits. Okay, so the first three is what I like to refer to as the GCD bits. Those of you who play the guitar understand what I'm talking about, but if you learn three chords, you can play a lot of songs with a guitar, GCD. It's the same way with PLC programming. If you learn about the XIC, the XIO, and OTE, then you can do a lot of different programs within Control Logics. Now we're also going to look at how an OTU, an output unlatch, and an OTL output latch works. But let's start with talking about XIC and XIO in particular because they're a little strange. Alan Bradley does things that are just a little different than what you would think. Looking at this, you would think that that would be a normally open contact and this would be a normally closed contact. But actually, this is an XIC examined if closed, and this is an XIO examined if open. And this is our output enabled or OTE bit. This, these are outputs. XIC and XIO are inputs. They're going to go on the left side of the rung. These are on the right side of the rung. But why would Alan Bradley call this XIO and XIC? Well, it's because what you have to understand is that it's looking at your input card. And so if we have a XIC, for instance, remember your XIC would be like a normally open contact. But if you have an XIC, for instance, that's looking at input zero here, and I've got a normally closed switch that's connected to my power supply, well, I'm allowing 24 volts or power or a high on this input zero all the time. In that case, this would be closed or enabled. And that's what that's saying. It's saying if your input is closed, you're going to enable this. Examined if closed. The same is true with the XIO, where if you had a normally open contact and had a zero on your channel that this is looking at, then this would be enabled because it works like a normally closed contact. And so that's the reason that Alan Bradley calls these XICs and XIOs. Now let's look into our program. So this is the same program that we created in our last video. This program is actually found under your task main task, main program, main routine. Okay, so that's where we find this at. Now when we start, I don't have a rung because last video I deleted that. I downloaded an empty rung into the PLC. Now one thing I'm going to do different this time is I'm not going to actually use alias tags. Remember, an alias tag is looking out. You have to address those inputs and outputs. I'm actually going to use a base tag which is just looking in because all I'm going to do is toggle this so you can see how the seal in circuits work. So let's start by adding a rung. You add rungs by this first instruction up here. It says rung. And when I click that, you see it pulls down rung zero. As I add rungs, the rungs obviously I have zero, one, two, three, they increase numerically. If you want to delete this, you just highlight the rung and hit your delete button. So let's start with rung zero here. Remember, we're going to create that same motor starter circuit that we used before, but we're going to assume that our stop is normally open and our start is normally open. So in order to do this, we need to start by using our XIC here, and we can add this in a couple of different ways. You click the rung. I can just simply come up here and click on the XIC to add it to my rung there or we're going to use an XIO for my stop, you can select this, hold your mouse down, and drag it down to wherever you want it. And you'll see that green circle light up to where you want to place it at. So we're going to place ours there. So now I have an XIC and an XIO. Now one thing that kind of increases the confusion about this is if you hover over this, that says examined on, 
even though that's an XIC. Let's say that you have this on your rung and you wanted to change this to an XIC, for instance. You can double click this bit and see how it says XIO. If you select the down arrow, you can change that to an XIC like that. But we don't want that. We, our stop is going to be a, a normally open push button, so we need this closed all the time in order to start our motor. Now, what we need to do now is add our OTE or our output coil, and so we just click OTE and we add it to this, this line here. Finally, what we need to do is, if you remember from our diagram, is that we had a contact that's associated with our coil in parallel around our start. And so in order to do this, we're going to click our start, and then we're going to go to the second option here, which is called branch. And when I click this, it brings a branch down. It's kind of aggravating how it places this sometimes, but you notice this, this dark blue line here. If I click that and hold it, I can move it wherever I want to move it. So I can either branch around my start or my stop however I want to, but I want to branch around my start here, so I'm going to let go of that. And you see now I've got a parallel path around my start button. I want to click on the corner of that, and I want to add another XIC here. Okay, so this is our circuit. Now all we have to do, notice we still have the red X, meaning that we have errors. It's because we don't have tags. Now the easy way to create tags is to right click your question mark and go to new tag. We're going to call this first one start, and it's a base tag. So that's all we have to do at that point. We just hit create. I'm going to do the same thing to my stop. Right click, new tag, and I'll call this stop base, just hit create, and then we'll call this run because we want this to start our motor. Let's call that run. Now, I've got two options here. I want this to come on or, or to become enabled whenever this run is enabled. So I can either double click my question mark and then I can choose my tag. So I want it, I want it to be my run tag here. So I can double click that run tag or what you can do is just simply take this tag. Now you got to be careful about this because you don't want to click on the instruction. You want to click on the tag. See how that runs in blue, whereas this, the instructions in blue. So make sure your runs in blue and you're going to hold it and you're going to pull it over to wherever you want it and let go. Now I notice my red X went away. That's because I don't have any more errors now. I have tags and everything and I can download this to my PLC. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to download this program to the PLC and watch this seal in circuit. We'll go to Who Active. We're going to find our PLC the same one that we used last time, which was 21. Here it is here. We're going to expand that, go to backplane. Then we're going to choose our slot 8 there. Now I'm going to download this. Yes, I want to download. Now we're running here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle this bit by going to, you can either get control T or right click the bit and go to toggle bit. So I toggled it on. Motor's running, but now watch what happens when I toggle this off. My motor stays running. See that? Because I've got this path now that goes through and it's going to stay running until I toggle my stop. Once I toggle my stop, my motor stops running and it waits for, for me to hit start again. That's the way a seal and circuit works. Now, if I can do this fast enough, it only takes a millisecond to start that motor. So let me stop it a second. The same is true with stop. So I'm just going to toggle this super quick. Now, you didn't see that start come on, but notice it's running. That's real important to remember whenever we do future programs. But this is our simple seal and circuit. What we're going to do is we're going to use these same tags, but we're going to use a latch and unlatch. Now what latch and unlatch does is it's different than our OTE. Whenever we enable a latch, it's going to stay high until we enable an unlatch. And so it's another way to do a seal and circuit. Now I'm online. Normally you would go offline here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click. And you can see here that what it does is it gives us a redundant rung and I can make changes online. 
So I'm going to delete this first rung. I'm going to add in a new rung. And then I'm going to actually add two rungs. And I'm going to use two XICs. Then I'm going to use a latch. And then I'm going to use an unlatch here. And all I'm going to do is move these tags up. Start and stop. And delete this. Now, once you've done your changes, you come over here and finalize all edits. So you want to finalize yes, and it's going to push those changes through your POC. All right, so let me go through here and toggle my stop. Here's how this works. Again, it works the same way, even though we got two OTEs here, and this is the only time you can use the same address on separate OTEs with a latch and unlatch. But what we did by putting that same address on that latch and unlatch is we basically make those two latches work as one. So whenever I come over here and hit my start button, you see it runs, both of them come on, and I'll let off my start, it latches that in. And it's gonna hold that high until I come over here and unlatch or stop that when my unlatch goes low. Okay, so this is the basics of motor starter circuits. I hope this helped you out. Please like and subscribe to my channel and share it. Hope everyone has a great day.